So there we go. Another tiny little place. So they're back on the feed. We're in on the fish, we're in on the fish. It was the tiniest little baby thornback ray. So I'm gonna... Dogfish. <laughs> Three species so far. So it's going pretty well. Bites every cast. So we're gonna get these ones whacked out and we're gonna see if a place is tempted by that juicy, juicy prawn. There we go. Place is dinner. Launch to sea. Well, good morning, everybody. You're joining me today down Bright Marina, and we're out targeting place. So I've got a few baits to go through, and we'll have a look at my rigs as the session goes on. So what bait do we have? Let's take a look. It's all in my Tronics Pro bait pack. And I've got fresh lug. I've got frozen lug. Now, sometimes I've been out fishing for place and all they'll take is fresh. Other times I've been out fishing, all they want is the frozen. So always good to try a few different things. I've got some prawns. And down here, we've got some ragworm as well. So four different kind of baits to try. And I'm going to keep mixing it up until we find out what's working today. So hopefully we'll be in on the place. I've already had a couple of casts before I got the camera out and I had a bite, which is great. And that was on the fresh lug. So we'll see how it goes. Well, second cast and we have another bite. This is also on the fresh lug. Left hand rod, let's keep an eye on it. Hopefully it's not a dogfish because that's not what we're after today. Although they can be fun to catch at times. This year I've caught plenty of dogs. So I'm just going to leave this bite to develop a little bit. Still tugging away there. I haven't had a touch on the other rod yet, which has got rag on it. But they've also got different rigs. So I'm going to have to mix the bait up on the rigs as well as just trying out different baits as the day goes on. Whenever I start fishing, I always like to try different tactics to start off with, see what's working best on the day. So I'm using three different rigs. And as I said, I'll go through those in a bit, but I've got uh, one of the torpedo rigs. I've got a two at clip down and a loop rig. So we'll have a look at those in a bit. So I've got high hopes that this is gonna be a place that is tugging away on that black lug. So the guy fishing in the next bay, so if you know Brighton Marina, it's got lots of bays and you turn up and you grab a bay. Uh, I think it's at most four people to a bay, but it's quiet enough down here that people seem to have a bay each. But yeah, so the guy in the next bay has just pulled in a nice little place. So hopefully there's a place on that. And as with all place bites, I'm gonna leave it to develop because flatties, they tend to suck at the hook and you've got to wait for them to take it down. Certainly with place anyway. Um, maybe not so true with some of the others. So yeah, fingers crossed. Let's lift into it, see if it's on there. I think it is. I think we have him. That's some little tugbacks. Yeah, there's something on here. Oh, it's gone light. That's not good. Hopefully it didn't come off. Oh, I think we have a miniature place. <laughs> Absolutely miniature. So there we go. Not quite the size I wanted, but nonetheless, we are on the fish. And the top hook on this rig's been stripped as well. So this is a really good sign. We get this little chap unhooked, chuck him back. Mm. 
There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> so this is my loop rig that I've got baited up, ready to go with fresh lug, which is what we just caught that little place on. So I've got loop there at the bottom, and that's got 18 inch snoods, six ounce grip, because the tide can rip around here on the marina. And those worms are loaded onto 1-0 saltwater uh, champions. And yeah, we're good to go. But you notice on here I've got no bling, just using a little sequence, little sequence to use, stop the, the worm sliding up the line there. So there my bait stops and just keeping it simple. Let's see if we can get another one. Well, I've just got a bite on the right hand rod now. That's got the rag on it, on the um, two at clip down rig. Really nice little pull down. So I'm gonna let that one develop and hopefully we get another hook up. There it goes, there it goes. Just leave it to try and take that bait down. So patience is definitely the order of the day when you're place fishing, because they do like to just suck at those baits. There it goes, there it goes. In a minute, I shall lift into it and we'll see if it's on there. If it's not, I'll pop it back down. Right, let's have a see. Let's have a see if it's hooked. Right, I can't feel it. So I'll pop that back down. Hopefully it's still there and still wants to eat that ragworm. So the bite on the right hand rod hasn't come back, but I've just had another pull down on the left one, which has got the lug on it. So I'm going to leave the left one to develop, reel the right hand one in, get some fresh bait chucked out there, and maybe, just maybe that fish did come back and I haven't noticed. So we'll see if we've got a fish on the end. Let's take a look. Hopefully that left hand one will keep going. Oh, this feels pretty light. I don't think there's anything on there, but that left-hand rod is still bouncing away. Right, nothing on here. It looks like the bait's been munched. So, look at that. That's the bottom hook stripped and the top hook also stripped so definitely it's good that I've reeled that in and get some fresh baits out. So I'm going to chuck out now my torpedo rig. I've got about a three foot snood on the top and uh, so it's 18 inch snood on the bottom. I have to think about that for a second then and you can see a nice juicy prawn on the bottom hook and I've got one of the frozen lug on the top hook. And again, six ounce grip lead because of the tide rip down here. And um, the rods I'm using today, I've got my Tronix Pro Zenon C6 low diameter rods. And the reason I bring these down the marina is because they're just a little bit shorter than my other rods and it's a little bit cramped for casting. So I get a bit better distance with the shorter rod and it's much easier in the confined space. And I've got my fixed balls down here again, just because it's easier to cast without the with the lack of space than my multipliers would be. So we're going to get these ones whacked out and we're going to see if a place is tempted by that juicy, juicy prawn. So I've rebated that two at clip down, left the bite on the lug to develop. So now we're going to reel that one in, see if there's anything on there. Tighten that drag. Oh, there's certainly some weight on that. But yeah, I think this one's on there, which is really good. And at the moment, it feels better than the tiny one I already caught. <laughs> Maybe it's a double shot of tiny ones.
Yep, yeah, they're still heavy. It's a good sign. It's keeping deep. It's keeping deep. That's another little one. There we go. Maybe not quite as little as the first one, or maybe it is. Maybe I'm fooling myself, but there we go. Place number two. Let's get him unhooked. Look at that, hasn't even swallowed the hook down deep. Get him unhooked, chuck him back. There we have him. So I'm just in the middle of getting my bait ready on the spare rig. And even though I've only just cast out that two at clip down, that's had a bite on it already. And I've also got a bite on the other rod, which had the prawn and the frozen lug on. So I'll just keep baiting up, let those bites develop, and we'll see if we can get into another fish. So I've got that, another frozen lug going on there. Let's get this on. And I'm going to stick some rag on the top hook. I think so far the indications are the kind of bait on the hook does not seem to matter. There must just be a carpet of place out there at the moment. Well, these rag are a little bit on the small side, so I'm going to put a couple on, maybe three. So I'm just going to slide those on the baiting needle. Personally, I find I get a better break presentation using the baiting needle. So I tend to use it most of the time, even for fresh worm baits. But I'm quite keen to make sure that when the worm slides on, the baiting needle only goes in once and out once, so that the worm doesn't get any little loops on it on the hook. Although some people don't mind having little loops, but personally I think that gives the fish a little bit of bait that they can grab onto and try and pull off. So if we take a look at that, you can't see the baiting needle anywhere in those worms except where it goes in, where it comes out. So there's three rag on there. I'm going to get those put on, ready to chuck out, when hopefully we've reeled in another place. Right, I've got to move my bait stop up, make sure there's enough space for these worms to go on, this bunch of worms, a little bit more, there we go. So I've slid those from the bait and needle up onto the hook and you can probably just about see the bait stop there by my finger holding those nicely in place so they're not too scrunched up but they're not going to slide up the line when I cast it out. So there we go, that is my loop rig all baited up and ready to get chucked back out. Frozen lug on the bottom and those three rag on the top. So the question now is which rod to reel in first? Let's take a look. I think the right hand one was the one I cast out most recently. So I'll just lift into the left hand one and see if that fish is on there. Yep, we've got another one. This one is definitely heavier. Definitely heavier. In fact, there might even be two on here this time. Let's see. This is the one that had the prawn on it. I'm just going to move over to the side, hopefully. It's coming. What have we got? Ah, it is not a place. It is not what I wanted to see. Not what I wanted to see at all. Dogfish. <laughs> that is not a place. That is not the place I wanted. Dogfish on the lug. So we get him unhooked. Chuck him back and wish for place. Ah, oh, dogfish. <laughs> so dogfish has swum off 
back to where from where he came. I've rebated the torpedo rig that I caught him on, and now we're ready to read in the left hand rod that had the other bite. So let's see if there's anything on it. And if you're wondering why it's still the left hand rod I'm reeling in, it's because I swapped the other ones around. The one I reeled in with the dogfish is now on the right, and this one's on the left. Let's see if we've got anything on it. Yep, well, it feels heavy again, so I fear we may be into the dog and not the place. Dog, dog, dog. So there we have it. The place has become a spotted dogfish. <laughs> I've caught so many dogfish this year. That's not even a big one. That's a baby dogfish. So get him unhooked, chuck him back and hope for something more orange spotty than lesser spotted doggy. Well, the right hand rod banging away there. I've got a feeling this is not going to be a place, but it's going to be another dogfish. You certainly know you've got them on there though when you're reading them in. And that last one I caught, I've got my hand right with its skin. Don't know if that comes out on camera, but I've got soft skin from working in an office too many years and it's taken the top layer off. So I'm sure that'll show up tomorrow morning better than it shows up now. But let's see, let's see if we've got another doggy on the right hand rod. Ah. Certainly got a little bit of weed. Ah. I think so. Pop that back down, got bait on two hooks. Let's see if the bite comes back. That's a very gentle little pull down there. Cool, you know what, it's actually getting warm. Makes a change from Norway where it was freezing. I think I might be overdressed. Anyway. We'll come back if that dogfish is on there and otherwise hopefully we can still get a place. So there we have that. Something's taken a right big munch out of that rag. And what about the prawn? This is the torpedo rig. Prawn, untouched. So maybe the prawn will scare the dogfish off but you never know it might not catch a place either. We keep trying. So this is my two hook clip down rig. You can see I've loaded that with about three rag at the bottom there again with the six ounce weight on and my usual sequin bait stop has got two foot snoots and we move up middle there i've got a cascade swivel and a fresh lug on the top hook again two foot snood and if you can make that out there's the srt spring i only use half a spring on my rigs on the top hook just giving a bit of tension to that so it doesn't unclip so we get this one back out and hope for another fish we get these baits chucked out. There we go. Place is dinner. Launch to sea. Well, I keep getting dogfish bites. I'm not going to bring you back for every dogfish we have. But on my left hand rod, I had what looked more like it might have been a place bite about five minutes ago. I've just left it there. So now we're going to reel this in and see if there's anything on the end. It's been a bit quiet on the rod tip, but sometimes place do that. They just come and sit on the bait. Oh. Oh, there's something on there. It feels like quite a dead weight though. I'm wondering if I've got my other line. There's no sign of movement on the other rod tip at the moment though. Eh? 
What have we got? Looks like we've got a double shot. Is it a double shot or just a, sh a doggy and a bit of weed? I can't quite tell. Definitely a doggy. We have baby dogfish. And on the top hook, apart from weed, we have a little rocklin. Let's get that bit of weed off there. Take a better look at him. There we go. Tiny little fish. And we're getting put back. So I thought it was time for an update on the different choices of bait and the different choices of rig. Well, the only bait I haven't caught on is the prawn and all my rigs are catching fish. So today there's enough fish out there. The tactics don't seem to matter. They're probably competing for the food, but for some reason they don't like a cooked prawn that's been reduced in weight trays. <laughs> anyway, we'll keep fishing, we'll keep trying. Three species so far, so it's going pretty well. Bites every cast. Let's get some fresh baits chucked out. Oh, it's come unclipped. Oh, it's come unclipped. Let's get that reclipped up. One issue of casting off the ground, you let that line go slack and the hooks come off the bait clip. So we've got an imp on the bottom there and this loop rig, so the cascade swivel for the top hook. Get that pot back on. Good to go. There we go. Bait's back out, ready to be munched. Well, I haven't said that, the last 20 minutes, the bites have died off a little bit. But they can't be hectic the whole time, so it's nice to have a bit of a breather. Well, for those of you who don't know about Brighton Marina, you do have to pay to fish here. The warden's just come round and taken his money off me and given me my little day ticket. So there we go. Um, it's £6 for one rod currently, it's £7 for two rods and I think if it's not busy you can have an extra rod and I don't know the charge for that but you can find all that out, I think it's on the Tackle Box website or if you go on Facebook there's a Brighton Marina fishing group and there's usually posts up there that talk about whether the walls open for example because they do close it in bad weather um, but today it's pretty gorgeous so we've been lucky on that side, we've paid for our rods, we caught some fish. There we go. I didn't even know I had a fish on there, so I didn't turn the camera on. It's not the biggest fish in the world, but it's another species. Little tiny whiting. So there we go. I've just had a bite on the left hand rod. Little taps. I'm not sure this one was a doggy. So that's a good sign. But we did just catch that small whiting, so you never know what it's going to be. One thing I like about these rods is they have really good bite detection. I think they've got like a hybrid tip. Um, so they sharpen bites really well. Even those little plates I caught earlier, you know, those little ones like that, easily see bites. But at the moment, the tide is absolutely ripping. It's pulling that way from right to left. Um, so hopefully that'll bring the fish back on the feed now the tide's picked up. Because it has, has been a bit quiet for the last 40 minutes, maybe. Even re reeling back in baits that were not untouched the last couple of casts. Sorry, not untouched? I mean, were untouched. Yeah, the last couple of casts. Keep on trying to bring something in. So the one on the right, I've actually put that in really close and that has already pulled right round to the right, even though I've got these six ounce grip leads on. Um, so I might have to start casting a bit more to the right when I cast out <laughs> so that the leads are sitting right in front of me. Still an awful lot of colour in the water, which would explain why we've had them doggies. Um, it's not ideal place conditions, but we've already had a couple. So, you know, always worth giving it a go. Well, bites back on the left hand rod. Just gave a really lovely pull down. It's a bit more exciting because someone about three bays down just caught a little bass. They'd be like that. So, there we go. Look, it does look a bit doggy like. Let's see if he's on there. <sighs> nope, still not hooked. Pop it back down. And we'll play the waiting game. It's still there, look, plucking away. Just need it to swallow the hook. But you know what? 
the sky is clearing. It's a lovely warm, warm day down here, even though it's still March. Feels like summer. Managed to take off my salopettes and I'm still cooking. There it goes, there it goes, left hand rod. Let's keep watching it. Let's lift into that again, just see if it's there. Nope, okay. Let's reel it in, get some fresh bait out. Oh, I don't know, maybe there is something on there actually. Maybe it's just something small, maybe it's not a doggy. Let's see. Oh, it's woken up, I think. We have got a bit of tide running, so let's see. Yep, we have another flatty. Hooray! Little flounder. There we go. Look at that, everybody. Another species. Um, try and get that rig out of the way. There we go. Let's have a better look. Nice little flounder. So we get this guy unhooked and have another look at him. So here's that flounder. I haven't actually unhooked it yet, but you might be able to see here, there's a little clip. So when I use like a loop rig or anything with a cascade swivel on the snood, I use a little mini clip to hold my hook length on because that makes it easier to unhook the fish. So now I've unhooked the mini clip from the snood, I can better pull this through the gills to get him unhooked. So if you haven't seen the through the gills on method, I've put up another little video on my channel earlier. If you look under the short section, you'll see an unhooking flatties uh, short there that shows you the method. So I'm going to get this guy unhooked now and then I'll pop him back. There we go. Lovely little flounder. Well, after that little flounder, let's get some baits chucked back out. There we go. Five species now. It's a pretty good session so far. We're in on the fish, we're in on the fish. Oh, well, we've got a bite on the left-hand rod. Another little taps, didn't look doggy. It's always encouraging when you're not trying to catch dogfish and it doesn't look like a dogfish bite. I think I had a couple of little taps on this rod earlier. So with any luck, we might have another flatty. The one I dropped in close, which is on the right, I haven't had a touch on that, so that's going to come in shortly and we get that chuck back out a bit further. It's got both lug and rag on there. As I said earlier, the choice of baits doesn't seem to be making much difference other than the prawn. Nothing seemed to want the prawn. But the worm baits, working well. The flounder I just caught, that was on the rag. Little bunch of about three small rag on there. Well, whatever made that rod tip bounce has either moved on or it's just sitting on the bait, taking its time, which flatties do. I'll give it another minute and then I'll lift into it, see if we've got a fish on there. Let's lift it up, see if there's a fish. Yep, yeah, we got something. Let's get this reeled in, see what we got. Quite a lot of weight on there, so I fear we might have a dogfish. Certainly looking at the bend, in the rod tip, hopefully that's in the shot. It's bending around nicely, which makes me think it's a dog. It's staying deep though. The dogfish usually come up to the top. Let's see, what have we got? I think it's a spinning flatfish. <laughs> Well, it wasn't a spinning flatfish. It was the tiniest little baby thornback ray. So I'm going to get this guy chucked back. He's completely destroyed my rig because he's span all the way in, but I'm sure he's going to swim back lovely. So I'll get him chucked back. Woohoo! Well, it was only about 10 minutes ago we chucked that ray back. And already on my left hand rod, I've got another pull down. It took a little while to get the bait back out because the ray destroyed my rig. I had to get another rig on. And my other rod, when I reeled it in to put fresh bait on, one of the hooks had gone. And I'm hoping that wasn't an early spider crab, because it's only March, very end of March. Though when you're watching this video, it'll be April. But still, nobody wants spider crabs. Anyway, let's watch this bite on the left-hand rod, because it could be yet another species.
There it goes, there it goes. Little taps. Let's give it a little bit of time. There it goes again. Hopefully this is coming out all right because the sun's moved around. And I haven't got a lot of scope about where I can put the camera down here. It's still there, tapping away. So I've just moved the camera around so we can get a better view of this rod tip. Hopefully the fish will play ball. And pull around again. The tip's just, just moving a little bit now. There it goes. Definitely something on there. Or at least something trying to eat the bait. I want to give it enough time to make sure it takes that hook down. Nice to get something a little bit bigger if we can. Something I can take home to be eaten. But so far everything today has all swum off well. Return to the sea. Come on, fish. Oh, no sign of any action since I put it back down. But you know what? Although I came down for place and I did have a couple at the beginning, it's been absolutely brilliant seeing all these different species come out. No monsters, but hey. I'm not complaining, it's been a really nice session. I'm always happy to have a species hunt instead of the actual species I came to target. Makes it a bit more interesting. I might even try another prawn in a bit, see if that can pick up a flatty. Rejected early on in the session, but you never know. Something might be interested in it now. Just watching, there's a little diving bird out there swimming around my line, so obviously I don't want to get that caught up. I think it's going to pass underneath, that's all right. Just drifting along. Just those little gentle pull downs on the rod tip, I'm pretty sure that's the tide. No sign, no sign of the fish coming back. So I'll give that another 30 seconds and if the fish is on there, I'll bring you back. Well, I said I'd bring you back if I had that fish. Actually, the other rod's just gone, the right hand rod just had a bite, looked like a flatty bite. So as per usual, we give it time to develop and we see if the fish takes the bait down. It's actually been really hectic. There was a little spell earlier when I mentioned it had gone quiet, but that probably only lasted about 40, 45 minutes. And then it's back to pretty much bites every cast. Odd exception. But look at the weather. You can't beat it. Blue sky, kind of. Warm. The fish are feeding. It'd be nice if the sea was clear, you know, I can try and ask for a little bit more. That's just being greedy, really, isn't it? Right, well, I'm going to leave that right-hand rod to develop a bit more. Hopefully the fish is there, thinking about eating that bait. We're going to reel the left one in, because that's the one I had the knocks on earlier. And it's been a little while now without it coming back, so it's worth reeling in to see if we've got a fish. Can you keep an eye on that one, just while I reel it in? So there we go, another tiny little place, so they're back on the feed, woohoo! Well, I just started reeling in, and there's a little bit of weight on here, this was the one I had a little taps on, just now, hopefully I'm not reeling the other one in, and hopefully it's not another dogfish. Definitely something on there. 
rubbish, Gabby. If you like, I got 20 million back in. <laughs> yeah, swimming down tide. Let's bring it up this way. Looks like a doggy. There we have it. Another. Another Brighton dogfish. Let's get him back to live another day. So left hand rod, that's the one closest to the camera. Got another bite. Hopefully another flatty. It's only just started, so as usual, we're gonna give it time to suck the bait down and hopefully get a hook up. Six species so far. I certainly wouldn't mind a seventh. There it goes. Just having a little play. Just very gentle little taps. You might not even be able to see them. There it is. Just very gently tapping. Now if I was going to reflect on what I could have done differently today so far, I would say given the size of the fish I have been catching, and that I've been missing quite a few as well, I probably should have been using smaller hooks. And to be honest, normally I would have had smaller hooks on my rigs when I come out targeting flatties. I've got one O's on today. That's because, to be honest, they're my Norway rigs that I had left. And if I'd had time, I would have made up basically the same style of rigs, but probably with size four or size two hooks on instead of one O's. Because the, the tiny little flatties that have been pulled in, the one O hook's a bit big really for them. A bit big for the rocklin as well. No problem, of course, for the doggies. But that wasn't the target. So yeah, definitely a lesson that I really should take the time to put the right size hooks on my rigs for the fish I intend to target. That being said, in the past I have used one O's when I've been targeting place, but usually when I'm after a bigger fish and I'll make up a single hook rig with a one O one for fishing at distance, trying to pick out that bigger specimen. But so these tiny little things probably really should be using size four hooks but still catching, so that's the main thing. Just a little, very gentle little tug there. The tide is just making the rod tip do that. Every so often there's a firmer little tug that you can tell it's a fish. There it goes, very, very gentle little taps. Let's see if it's there. Oh, feels like there might be a bit of weight on here. Yep, there's there. Could have been just the grip lead. Not so sure if there is something on here and it's small. Be there, I think there is a fish. I think it's a tiny fish. What have we got? I'll just move over to the side so I'll pull this up the gap. <coughs> there we go. Another little white in. Let's get this chap put back. Well, I just chucked that white in back, cast straight back out, and I've got what looks like a doggy bite on the other rod. Is it on there? Right, put that back down. Oh, it's getting warm. I might have to take my jumper off. 
Oh, look, it's still biting, look. Lift into that again. I've got a big bit of weed on here. I don't think there's any fish though. There we go. And that rig has failed to unclip. I hate it when that happens. Ah, failure to launch. Well, that bait is immaculate. So I'm going to get it chucked back out. I haven't got another rig baited up. This is the quickest way getting my bait back out in the water. Hopefully this time it'll unclip. Well we've got a bite on the left hand rod, that's the one nearest the camera. Tapped away a little while ago but I left it. It went quiet and now it's tapping again. I've also had a bite on the right hand rod, but that only pulled, oh there it goes again actually, <coughs> bites on them both. Certainly keeping me on my toes. I've had to take my jumper off, it is so warm down here. End of March, fishing without a jumper. Bloody lovely. Right, well the one on the right had a bite first, so I'm going to lift into that and see if we've got a fish. Let's see. Is there anything on there? No, I don't think so. It's very light. I've got a spare rig baited up ready to go and I've gone for fresh lug tipped with little tiny bits of prawn. So I'm going to give that prawn another go but using it as a cocktail bait. Yeah, no fish on here. Something's had a go at the lug, looking at that. It's half pulled it off. Lug on the bottom hook. So there we go, look. Something's had a munch on that one. Rag probably looks about right. Don't think anything's had a go at that, but something's definitely pulled that. All right, let's get this one unclipped. Stick the other rig on, get it back out there. Come back on. So there we go. There's the lug, tip with prawn. I've got that on both hooks. Let's send it out. Well, as well as a boat just going past really close, we've just had a bite on the left-hand rod. There it goes, there it goes. Looks like a doggy. Oops, that was me knocking the rod. Let's see if it's on there. Oh, let us see. Oh, it's heavy. It's dogfish heavy. It's definitely on it. This one's actually fighting back. I'm just trying to work out if it's over my other line. Let's come this side. It's definitely fighting back. Better than a normal dogfish. It's a spinning dogfish. Dogfish. <laughs> there we go. Another dogfish. Let's get it on a hook, chuck it back. Well, I just picked up the rod I chucked out with the prawns on. I've had a few chucks with the prawns and nothing happened, but this one feels heavy. So we're gonna see 
if we have something on it. There's definitely a lot of weight on this, but it's a dead weight. Maybe I'm reading the other one in. Because I haven't really seen any interest in the prawns at all. This could change all of that, of course. Probably a dogfish. Well, it's woken up. There's definitely something on there. It's staying deep. Let's see, what have we got? I can't actually see because of the sun. Whiting. And someone else's rig. So I just had to sort out a bit of tangled line there. Um, but that was a whiting on the uh, worm tipped with prawn. So the prawn isn't completely putting things off and it has brought us a fish. The baits are out. We've got something on here. I'm hoping it's another flatty. Now I'm getting it near the edge, it's fighting more like a dogfish. Brown water, brown fish. Swimming up to the left. Leaders on the reel. What have we got? What have we got? Oh, that's a whiting, a double shot. So there we go, double ting, and it's all action. Well folks, I've had quite a few double shots of whiting in the last half hour, 40 minutes or so. Um, and I've only got about four lug left that I haven't got on hooks. I've got two more here baited up, ready to go on my torpedo rig. So I'm gonna get these guys chucked out and see if we can pick up some more fish. But I'm probably only gonna have a couple more casts given the bait situation. Um, if I get any more fish, then I'll bring them back. But we came down here targeting place today and we had three, so that was fantastic. And it's really turned into a bit of a species hunt. We've had six species all together with whiting, rockling, the flounder, the place, uh, dogfish, and that cute little fawn back ray that lived to swim off and fight another day. So it's been a really nice day, glorious weather for the end of March. And yeah, so I'm sure I'm going to be back down the marina fishing again here at some point uh, it's been a really good day and if you've enjoyed my video please do click like and consider subscribing to the channel it's all really appreciated thanks guys time to get the last little baits chucked out Woohoo!